Hello, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. Today on Museum at Home, we're going to look at the wedding dresses in the museum's collection. We have three wedding dresses in the collection, or rather, three that we know were worn as wedding dresses. Being able to afford a dress that was worn only once, particularly a white dress that was difficult to clean, wasn't an option for everyone, and many brides have often simply worn their best dress on their wedding day. The first dress we're looking at is a silk dress from around 1900. In 1968, before the museum was established, the dress was donated to the Museum and Historical Society by the Alexander Estate. The only note on its history was that it was the wedding dress of Mrs. D.C. Alexander. With a bit of research, we discovered that D.C. stood for Dewitt Clayton. Dewitt Clayton Alexander was born in 1875 in Wisconsin and came to Canada around 1909. His wife, Ethel Gladys Alexander, would have been born around 1883. We backtrack the number because we know she was 82 when she died in 1965. In that time period, just after 1900, women were typically married between the ages of 20 to 25, which would put the date of the dress from 1903 to 1908. Though it looks like a dress, this outfit goes on in three pieces, the bodice, the skirt, and the belt. The skirt and bodice do up at the center back with hook and eye closures, while the belt is up at the front, under the flower detail. Homemade, it is mostly machine stitched, with some hand stitching. The bodice is cut long at the front to allow for the pouch look that was popular in the early 1900s. In this 1910 wedding portrait, you can see Clarice O. Blackmore with the same pouched look. Clarice is also wearing a belt that points down at the front, as does the Alexander dress. The fabric of the Alexander dress is a very light silk that is almost transparent. In these photos, we put a plain cotton slip on the mannequin, and the mannequin itself has been shaped to mimic the undergarments of the era. Ethel would have worn it with a corset and petticoats underneath. Silk stockings likely would have been worn with this formal outfit, and for jewelry, perhaps a brooch, a long string of pearls, or a spray of fresh flowers. In this wedding portrait from the same era, we see that the bride's dress also has a high neck and a belted waist. Our second dress is from the flapper era. The 1920s dress is slim and boyish, a marked contrast only 20 years after the Alexander dress. It was worn by Dora Osborne when she married Alf Plant on New Year's Eve in 1924. Dora was originally from Nanaimo, but came to Port Alberni in 1928, where she and her husband opened a bakery. Now you should know that we would never try on a piece from the museum's costume collection, because historic textiles can be very fragile. However, before donating this dress to the museum, the family photographed one of Dora's great-granddaughters wearing the dress. It's made of silk georgette, which drapes nicely. Together with the drop waist, it gives the dress a long, straight profile, the boyish look that was popular in the 1920s. The dress has some simple decorations of lace and long pieces of velvet ribbon on the skirt and on one shoulder. The dress is so simple, it's actually a bit difficult to tell the front from the back. As you can see in Dora's wedding photo, pictured with her mother and sisters, the dress was worn with evening gloves, long gloves that reach over the elbow, and a headpiece with a long veil. The headpiece, though not the veil, is also in the museum's collection, though it is quite delicate now, so we haven't photographed it on a mannequin. And though you can't see it in the photo, Dora's garter is also in the museum collection. This wedding portrait, from 1923, also shows the straight flapper style with the drop waist. Throughout the 20s, we see shorter dressers with the boxy look of the dropped waist, though by the 1930s, we see skirts dropping to the ankle. Our final dress is from the 1960s. Joanne Askew made her own wedding dress during the summer of 1961. Joanne studied home economics at UBC, and the museum has, in its collection, two other dresses that Joanne made during her studies at UBC in the mid-1950s. The wedding dress, or outfit, consists of two pieces, a dress with a matching jacket. The sheath dress, a popular style in the 50s and 60s, is made out of a cream-colored satin. Sleeveless, it has narrow straps at the shoulders and a lace overlay on the skirt. The bodice is lined with a satiny material, while the skirt is lined with cotton. The same lace for the skirt overlay is used to make the short matching jacket. The sheath style came on the heels of Dior's new look of the 1950s. 
It had a similar fitted bodice of the new look style, but replaced the wide skirts with a shorter, more fitted option. If you want to see more historic fashions, check out the museum's historic photo collection, available online at portalberni.pastperfectonline.com. A search for dress or portrait will get you started. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the Alberni Valley Museum's Museum at Home.